can't hear you. Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me? How about now? Good. All right. That weird thing where I just have to turn the volume up and down for no particular reason. I think sometimes there's a setting when you start, they turn off everything. Oh, look, Ben's joining us. Hello, Ben. You're muted. Hello. Hi, it's like you've got a halo around you there. <laughs> <laughs> Very elegant. I put it there especially. <laughs> And nice to meet you. Hi, hey, Sarada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarada and I live on the same side of the country. Mm -hmm. We uh, should catch up sometime. Oh, you're in Perth, Ben? I'm in Collie, which is 40 minutes up the hill from Bunbury. Collie. It's another you two hours. <laughs> it took two, and Bunbury's two hours south of Perth. So. How do you spell Collie? C O L L I E, like, like the dog. Collie, Western Australia. It's the uh, power generation centre of the state prior to renewables. Okay, I see. You're inland. Yeah, yeah it's it's uh, lots um, of forests around you. That sounds nice. It is. Yeah, yeah. Actually, in my in my introduction at the, at the course, I, I list I showed a few videos of the place. Mm -hmm. We were uh, transitioning from. Um, yeah, from coal powered to something else. So, not quite sure yet. But the government's putting a lot of money in to uh, into the town to um, help it get started in other industries. So it's good. Oh, good. Eh? Yeah. So you, usually I'm. Uh, you, you, this is right in the middle of my drive to work. <laughs> so, but I got a little cough developing, so I thought I'd stay home oh. and have an opportunity to. I hope in. you're all right. Yeah, yeah, I'll see how it goes. All right. Any news since yesterday? Just looking at the forum. I was I was just looking at one thing that just happened to Reef, do a pull on the on the APL notebook, and I was just looking at the nine eleven one, which is monadic, and it's called rank. That's are you looking at what? I'm looking at the at the notebook. The notebook, yep, yeah, right. I got it open here. So, so I just gave that a pull a few minutes ago. Yeah. So it should be nine eleven one. What does that mean? Nine, eleven, one. Well, oh, they're, they're auto numbered each each thing. So do uh, I don't have num I don't have numbering on. No? no. Okay. That's interesting. Why mine's different? That's because you have the table of contents extension installed. Ah, gotcha. Okay, so jot diuresis. Okay. The, the so monadic. Go down to operators. And. Yeah. Towards the jot, end. Jot diuresis. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it says it says in brackets it says rank, and that's what it's doing is not what I understood rank no, to be. No, that seems to be incorrect. So, um, and Jeremy, do you want to share the screen? Uh, yes, um, just looking up the correct name for jot diuresis. Oh, it does say rank on for for a different meaning of rank is it or yeah um yeah okay no it is oh yeah it is rank and we haven't really fully investigated this one yet so yeah let's come back to that um maybe even today all right let me share my screen Hi, Wasim, how are you? I'm good, thanks. And you? Not bad. 
Um, all right, so yesterday we were doing axis, we did comma, we did comma bar. Is that basically where we got to? I guess so. Uh, oh, and then we were doing axis with monadic operand. Okay. Um, yeah, well, that's actually not a bad time, actually, to look at jot diuresis. So what if we move? Well, I mean, so the first thing I'd say is slope and slope bar probably deserve to be moved up anyway. So, and then let's move jot diuresis up. Okay. Um, and then this one. Oh, okay. This one's got a monadic as well. Sorry, no, not a monadic as well. Ah, okay. This is where we need to be careful to include the um, uh, all the possible versions. So there's both rank and a top. Ah, so rank is not its meaning. Rank, rank is its meaning. This is, this is the type of... Rank is its meaning. Yep. Oh, I don't right. know what it is now. It is the rank operator. So, um, okay. So it's uh, quite similar to axis. And in fact, okay. So slope bar and slash bar are basically identical, I think, to um, using the axis uh operator um yes as you can see um and then uh rank is also the same yes as you see here so the rank operator um uh is um takes a function on the left and an, uh, a scalar on the right. Is it always a scalar? Um, wrong one, rank. B. Okay, it can be a scalar. It can't, sorry, a scalar, or it can be a vector. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I knew that too. All right, so what this is going to do is it's going to take the plus slash function and it's going to apply it um, over this axis. So, oops. which it's very similar to the axis operator. So just, just to clarify, it's not rank in the, in the way that we learned through the course where it's the number of dimensions of Correct. the it array. Correct, so, it is not that. So, so that rank is row row. So you can always get the rank by calling row I think row. Maybe just an extra comment there, just because when I read rank, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't added any pros to this. Yeah, okay. I haven't added any pros to this yet, so um, I'm, I'm not going to add it just yet. But yeah, when we add gotcha. pros, yeah, we do that. Um, so if we've got here, um, so the first dimension, the first axis is this one. So this is going to apply sum over the first axis which is identical to slash bar. Uh, no, it's not slash bar, it's 
slash bar would be doing it over the second axis. Uh, hmm. Now, what am I, am I, something interesting going on here? Ah, so, so there's only, Okay, it's different to axes because if we did axes, do you need to use a cube for an example to see the difference? Okay, so axes works this way. Um, it specifies the rank of the cells. Okay, so it selects K cells of the corresponding argument. So K cells, so, okay, so the, the one cells of this are the cells which are vectors. I see, so um, rank isn't able to like transpose it or anything, I guess, uh, using this approach. Um, I don't know if there's something if it's negative. Here we are, if it's negative, Minus one selects major cells. Okay, so there's a whole thing about cells and subarrays here. That's useful. A rank K cell describes a subarray on the last K axes. Okay. Negative K. Describes a subarray on the leading k axes of an array r plus k what does that mean because like r is the rank of the array okay so in our case that's two so a negative k would be oh r plus minus one i see that's why. Uh, so, got it. R plus minus one would be would be the last axis. Okay, that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. So this is different to the axis operator. You can't change the axis. You can just say um, what cells to to do this over. So I like this idea of using a cube. Um, then that would be cube. Okay, so that's doing it over um, the one cells. So these are the one cells. And here are the sums of the one cells. Okay, so then if we do two, it should be over the two cells, which are yeah. Interesting. Two cells would be, I see, I thought a two cell would be this whole thing. So I was expecting it to add that all up. Do they have some examples? Uh, Oh my gosh, this is confusing. I posted a link in the chat. Be... Go ahead. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I posted a link in the chat to the wiki which shows rank versus axis, like some examples oh, great. are to get the same. Great. I keep forgetting to use APL wiki. Rank. And what's an anomalous axis operator?
A non-negative right operand, that's what we have, specifies the number of final axes to which the function applies. Negative is the is Frank versus axis example, it looks like they don't use plus slash, or they use like slash bar, or I'm just gonna... Um, oh. Um, that shouldn't make any difference, should it? When you've got a rank with it? I try it. Oops. I think this should be the same. I am is, wrong. Is the round brackets causing something to change how it's applied? The, the round brackets, um, I think, would be necessary because otherwise, because of precedence, without it, it would be parsed like that, I believe. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so this is different somehow. Um, monadic, okay, dyadic slash bar as an operator. Uh, so the cells and sub arrays uh, documentation says that uh, two cells are like two matrices uh -huh. of 2D shape. Uh -huh. So if we look at the notebook, just uh, before we do, I just want to mention this, this is what I thought. It says it just implies reduction among a particular axis. Um, so I'm not sure why these two are giving slightly different answers. Um, Oh, I see why. So um, cube is reducing down. down. Uh, so in this case, it's one cells are considered to go kind of downwards rather than acrosswards. That's why it's different here. Um, so it's doing matrices and it's summing up each lot of thing in each of those matrices. Okay, yeah, sorry, go ahead. So what were you saying about um, notebook? I think you, you are on the right track. So the documentation says if X is the three dimensional matrix of shape two, three, four, the two cells are its two matrices of shape three, four. So in our case, it is uh, two matrices of shape two by two, one, two, Let's three. Let's do that, four, shall we? Six, so two, three is a six, four, so 24, okay. Yeah. And so two cells, rank two cells are uh, the matrices of shapes three by four. And we are applying the slash to that whole matrix, the each matrix. So slash bar, I guess, um, is applying it to the last axis. Mm -hmm. So one plus five plus nine is 15, two, six, 10 is 18, mm -hmm. and 13, 17, 21 is 51. Right. Which gives us these. So the operator is applied for each matrix uh, of three by four. Mm -hmm. So, um... 
So, so normally, it's, it's, think... if we went uh, matrix is a three by four. Um, yeah, so that's, that is the first row of that. Because it's being applied to matrices. Is that the idea? And then this yeah. one is being applied to vectors. Um, that one is uh, the rank of the sub matrix. Uh, yeah. That, that uh, documentation you showed you before, K cells. Yeah. So that, I believe, is a K cell. So I'd expect you'd get seven, 10. Yes, which you do, 10. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, that makes sense, kind of. <laughs> um, the one I think is particularly helpful is the version where you pass a um, two element array on the right hand side. Um, because then um, you've got um, we should be able to add Let's say we wanted to add one to each row or add one, two, three to the first, second, and third rows. We'd go one, two, three. Now you can't just add that to the matrix because they don't match. Um, but what you could do is you could say, um, uh, so the keyboard shortcut for this is Shift J. Um, So we're going to go through each cell on the left. And then on the right, we're going to go through each each vector on the right. Um, that is zero. Yes, OK, each scalar on the left. So this is going to go through each scalar on the left and each vector on the right. And so the vectors on the right are the first one will be 1, 2, 3, 4. And the first scalar on the left is 1. So the first result is 1 plus 1, 2, 3, 4. The second is 2 plus 5, 6, 7, 8. So that's how we can do quick loops between two different things. So that's a pretty important operator. And um, Adam mentioned that as well uh, on the forums. Does anybody have any questions about that? It's a bit, it's a bit odd. I think a key thing is to um, look at this uh, um, idea about cells and subarrays. So I've come across this before because they talk about it in J a lot. J being the language that Iverson built after he built APL. All right. Um, so maybe we should move to a top, which I think is going to be easy because I think it's largely the same as jot, find, 
like so. So we can just borrow the use from Jot. And this is not monadic, this is dyadic. Dyadic. So that should all be the same as far as I know. Okay, I think we said it was Shift J. Ah, different. Okay, let's find out why. So, a top. F G Y equals F of G of Y. Oh, uh, this is uh, this is the wrong version. I need the bind one. No, I don't need the bind one. I mean, I need the side. Yes, that's the same. And then this one is the same. Um, it looks like for Jot, we... Ah, now that's interesting. Uh, there's some difference between them, I thought, in the dyadic... Oh, okay, I need to... Okay, whoops, I forgot to change it. Cool, that's the same. And this one's different. Okay, so the monadic one's the same, the dyadic one's different. Uh, let's have a look. I think there's some nice pictures. Here we are. Okay, here's the difference. So beside, which is the one we've learnt before, first of all, applies the right-hand function. The way Adam describes it is it pre-processes the right-hand side. And then the left-hand function applies to the left-hand side and that pre-processed right-hand side. Oh, and a top's doing the opposite, basically. It's applying the, the right-hand side dyadically and then post-processing with the left-hand side. You see the difference? Okay, so uh, that means that this one here would be, should be two divided by three first. Two divided by three first, and then it's going to do e to the power of that, which means we basically don't need any parentheses. Ta -da. Does that make sense? It did for me. All right, great. Thanks, Molly. Still getting my eye in with all the symbols. <laughs> yeah, tell me about it. Uh, any in particular you want to um, explained or reviewed? No, no, it's just just having so the, this, this the, here the, is to the, the power time of. to process. So this is e, this is e to the power of. So this is e to the power of two thirds. Cool. Um, which makes me think we should do this last one now over. Um, probably makes sense, right? So over is here. Shift O over. A little bit confusing because it looks a bit the same. Um, Just in those three diagrams, can yes. you in in the notebook can you break down which is x and which is y? 
So y is always the right hand side and x is yeah, always the left the hand side. The far left hand side. Yeah. Okay. And you can tell in the documentation um, because if you look at a particular example, like here, over here, it shows you here. So R is the result, yeah. X is the left hand side, Y is the right hand side, and F and G are the left and right arguments to the operator. Yeah, I just in, in the example, I just want to concretely point it, which is which. So in the example, this is X, uh, so yeah. this is X. Yep. And Y. Yep. Oh, and G is inside the F function. And G is, is yeah, F is F and G. Yep, got it. And if you define your own operator, they have different names. I kind of wish I used these names in the documentation. They're called, uh, F is called alpha alpha. G is called omega omega, which we don't have for this one. Uh, X is called alpha and Y is called omega. Mm -hmm. uh, so over is, uh, okay, same thing monadically. So that's pretty easy. I guess we don't need quite so many examples for the ones that are identical. It's all right. Um, copy that, paste that. Okay. So shift O. This symbol's called circle diuresis. Dyadic version. That. Called over. In. I should do this one. Over. Okay. Um, so over. That should be exactly the same, which it is. Now the um, dyadic version is different. It's going to apply G. It's going to pre post both left and right. So I'm going to try to predict what it's going to do. So here, it's going to apply divide to both sides. So we're going to get that, I think, should be the answer. It is. So it's applying divide to the left, it's applying divide to the right, and then it's applying power of to that result. That is what this useful picture is showing. Okay, and then it's showing when any of these applied monadically, the dotted branch disappears. Which means in every case you're F left with FGY, FGY, FGY. All right. So it's nice to see all these different types of function composition. Um, yeah, you know, it's something that we're not used to from other languages, are we, really?
Um, but the idea comes from combinatory logic. Um, and there is the, Haskell, so Haskell Curry kind of, I don't know if he invented it, but he certainly developed it. Uh, there's the Curry combinators, Curry combinators. Um, it basically defines these different ways of of combining, or I guess we'd say in computer science, composing functions. Um, and so, yeah, all the um, all the these ways of doing things in APL, I believe, are directly aligned with different curry combinators. I am not yes. at all an expert on that, though. Is that where the term curry comes from? Like it is. Yeah. Used in carrying of functions. Thought that, Haskell curry. I thought that was a this thing that predated Haskell. Uh, was Haskell was named after Haskell curry. Haskell curry predates Haskell by a long way. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Good. And that's what we would call partial functions in Python. Um, right. Um, another thing I wanted to mention actually, which uh, is to go back a bit to the Boolean stuff. I feel like we should have uh, covered a couple of other things. One is I think we should have covered uh, slash as a function. Um, because we've covered slash as an operator but not slash as a function. And the reason I want to put it with Boolean is because, oh, in fact, there's quite a few monadic versions, like, well, or quite a few. Uh, let's check this. There's equals. Uh, okay, doesn't have a monadic, not equals. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So um, I want to, do you guys remember um, monadic not equal to, which um, tells you, uh, have we seen this number before in the list? And so it's going to end up giving you a one for unique values. Um, where this is interesting is we can combine it with slash. Can you guys still hear me? My headphones just... Yeah, that's good. Okay, I think they're running out of batteries. Um, what should I do? I got a bit more fancy. Hi, uh, can you guys hear me? Yep, can okay. do. Yeah. Great. It's a, little, it's a bit louder. A bit louder, okay. But, but okay. Cool. Okay. Let's see if I can adjust it here. Audio settings. All right. Um, yep. All right, so um, paste. So we're going to do slash as a function. Um, 
and it's called replicate. And what it does is it um, let's put this in V and then not equal to is eight. What it does is repeats whatever's on the right by the number of things that's on the left. So if we say on the left is a Boolean array and on the right is the array itself, then that returns a unique list of the elements of V because it's repeating, it's basically element-wise repeat. So one copy of 22, one copy of 10, zero copies of 22, zero copies of 22. Does that make sense? One copy of 21. And so that's the result. So you don't need a separate unique function in APL. You know, we can just combine this idea of replicate with um, unique mask and it behaves as a mask. Is is this where they might use that x y swap thing to get rid of the brackets? Uh, yeah, could try that. We couldn't just we? Add, add it as a second line output to quad. It'd be yeah, just oh yeah, we could do that. As well. Oh now I've messed it all up. Whoopsie daisy. Um, yeah, but it was a second line. Okay, so actually, I I have a general question for everyone. Um, with the keyboards. I find that I actually I, I actually I haven't tried to hunt this down myself much, but I find I'm hitting control and shift keys often to do things and it changes my keyboard every time. And then my control Zs don't work. Does anyone else experiencing that? Um, yeah, so you can just hold down Windows and press space to switch keyboards. Yeah, that, it works. does, but but it's also switching keyboards every time I hold Control and Shift together. Oh, you can change that in your language bar settings in Windows. Okay, all right, I'll go looking for it then. Yeah. Cool. I'm on a Mac at the moment, so I don't see the same thing. Okay, so the swap was like uh, this one. I think so. Shift T. So I switch them around. And have we done that yet? No, we haven't done that yet. Oh, so okay. I won't put it there. But no. yeah, that would totally that would totally work. Um, and then yeah, the other thing you can do, since it's replicate, you could say like um, three. So it's just going to re repeat. Maybe we want to repeat the consonants three times or something. There you go. I like this thing in APL, you know, this like, I feel like things are always just made more general than most other languages. So rather than just having a Boolean mask operator, you know, it's called replicate. Uh, I like that. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. All right. So then um, we need to revisit all of our operators and make sure we didn't miss any examples of what they can do, which is what 
Adam pointed out that probably that we definitely have. Um, that's much slow. So we've got, yes, we have not done expand, for example, which is, oh, that's used as a function. Okay, I've never seen this before. Hmm. So in the in the in the letters wherever it had the minus it gave spaces it's got one and then two spaces and then a subarray of fill elements is replicated like in the, well in the matrix example you've got a number one and then you've got two zeros because it's minus two mm. and then you've got two replicated so that's replicating the second element twice and then you have uh, yeah, so it's doing it kind of like across columns. So, yeah, I, mean, I think if you um, put it in your lookbook and had a box around it, it may be easier to see. Oh, you think there's a boxing thing going on here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the, the second one, the A's, that may be, uh, definitely have some boxing around it. Okay. Not much to say. Um, so yeah, I guess we, that means it's these are actual spaces. That's so two spaces, spaces yeah. And, this and then there's four, four spaces. Okay, this isn't really got anything to do with Boolean, so we can probably come back to it. Um, so I don't think we need that right now. Uh, as an operator, we've done. Okay, they don't, have they got a dyadic? I don't think so. Okay, so I think we've done this operator fully. Um, slash bar is the same. And I think we checked these pretty carefully. Um, so let's check star diuresis, star diuresis, power operator. Okay, I don't think we've, oh, I did want to talk about power operator some more because we missed a really interesting case of power operator, which is a, um, a negative number here. Um, So if you remember um, here, we're saying, um, okay, this is, a, sorry, this is the successor function. Okay, so it adds one to things. And this here says run the successor function three times to zero. So we get three. Um, what's interesting though, is we can also say, um, we can also create subtraction and the way we can create subtraction is to say, um, like subtract one, for example, subtract one. Um, I guess that should be P, predecessor instead of successor, predecessor. 
we can define as um, successor uh, star diuresis. Sorry. Oh, I'm uh, notice. I don't know if it's only me, but it looks like you're typing off the edge of the screen. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Is that okay now? I can see that. Yeah, I can see it now. Cool. All right. Um, power negative one. Now, what power negative one does is it's the inverse function. So the inverse of adding one is subtracting one. The predecessor of three should be two. Isn't that amazing? So um, APL understands inverse functions, which is a pretty sophisticated mathematical concept. And it's even like doing inverse functions of functions that we've defined ourselves. Um, and if you put a negative something other than one, I believe it applies it the inverse function that many times. Um, whoopsie daisy. So I think we could say, apply the successor inverse function three times to the number five, for example. And there you go. That's the equivalent of five minus three. So oh. you could also do a square root. Um, so if you wanted square root, you could do um, um, Think so that's going to be so let's say square um, is um, to the power of dot two. So then we should be able to get the square root of nine by doing square. Um, inverses, the inverse function of square, which is square root. There you go. Cool, cool. Very cool. So it's like solving an equation, you know? Um, yeah, okay, so I'm glad we revisited that one. I think it's pretty amazing. Tilda diuresis. Okay, yeah, we missed one of these. So this is dyadic commute. Oh no, it looks like we've got it here. And there's also, this one's called this one's called constant. All right. Mute. All right.
and then diuresis. Okay, it's H. And we've got H with dietic operand, and here we are, got H with monotic operand. Okay, so now I'm wondering what, does anybody remember on the forums, Adam said that there was a problem with our operators. And he had a particular example of something we missed. Sort by latest post. Oh, that's interesting. So Adam says many APLers frown on bracket access as anomalous and there's no general rule. Yeah, the modern alternative is rank operator. Often together with transpose. Okay, we haven't done come to that yet, but I guess we can guess what that means, which is general. Cool. So you don't often need bracket access. Ah, that's good to know. So transpose should be one we could do reasonably early, wouldn't rely on yeah. the other ones. Absolutely. Um, I'm just trying to find this one with it. about what we've got to fix. Right, I'm pretty sure we're missing something. Ah, here it is. Okay, systematic problem of terminology. So for functions, yes, they're monadic or dyadic. But for operators, there's monadic and dyadic operators, and then these can derive monadic and dyadic functions. For this one, we've got dyadic commute. And so we've missed the fact that this derives a monadic function. Okay, let's check that one. Um, So this tilde diuresis derives a monadic function. Which I guess is this here. Oh, look at that. If the left argument x is omitted, and you can tell that you can because it's in curly brackets here, then the right argument is duplicated. Okay. I'm not sure the APL docs really lay that out as nicely as Adam, Adam has done either. It's not really showing us that as clearly, but yeah, I can see that now. So we need to check when we look at the documentation for these uh, X curly brackets to see things where there's a optional left-hand side. That's interesting. So it's going to duplicate it. Um, what would be an example of where you might want to do that? I think maybe um, our um, unique thing. Would that work?
So let's do it the other way around. Um, v slash, oh, I have a feeling this is going to work. Uh, v slash, well, hmm. not quite. So we've got this, which has got V on both sides. Um, so I wonder, I, I don't feel that confident, but I wonder if you can do that. No, you can't. Oh, I've got it in the wrong place. Yeah, no, the problem is that's going to put this on each side. Um, no. All right, that's not a good example. Okay, so does anybody have an example of something? Um, oh, I know a simple example. We could define power as being um, as being um, multiply on either side. That should be power, right? Ah, yeah, there you go. Cool. All right, well, if anybody comes across any other ones where we didn't notice a monadic version, let me know. Um, just back in that previous cell, did you want to lose that previous example? Which previous example? The one you overwrote to in this cell 223. Oh, was there something there? Oops. Oh, this one? Oh, no, no, back, that back in that cell, if you just hit Control-Z a few times, you'll, you'll see. Oh, maybe, you, maybe you meant to override it, but it was a, looked like it was a good example before that. That one. That. No, that this one. is. Uh, you didn't want to keep that? Oh, yeah, because we can use it. I see what you're saying. We can use it for the. Um, we can use it for this one. Just yeah, just give it a new cell. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay, thanks for the idea. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kang. Cheers. See ya. Thank you. See ya.